Welcome to Dark Theory Incorporated. What is preventing them from using nuclear fusion right now? There are several scientific and engineering challenges that are preventing the widespread use of nuclear fusion as a source of energy. Some of the key challenges include 1. Containment One of the biggest challenges in nuclear fusion is containing the extremely high temperatures and pressures required for fusion to occur. 1. This requires the use of strong, lightweight materials that can withstand these conditions. 2. Fuel Another challenge is obtaining the fuel required for fusion. 2. The two isotopes of hydrogen used in fusion, deuterium and tritium, are relatively rare on Earth and must be obtained through a complex and expensive process. 3. Reaction rate In order for fusion to be a practical source of energy, the reaction rate must be fast enough to produce a significant amount of energy. 3. Currently, the reaction rate is too low for fusion to be a practical source of energy. 4. Heat management Fusion generates a large amount of heat that must be removed from the reaction chamber. 4. This requires the use of efficient cooling systems to prevent the materials from melting or being damaged. Despite these challenges, there has been significant progress in recent years in developing fusion as a source of energy, and many scientists and engineers are working hard to overcome these challenges. Both a physical substance and a magnetic field are used to contain the plasma, the mixture of ions and free electrons, in a fusion reaction. The plasma is contained within a device called a tokamak, which uses a magnetic field to keep the plasma away from the walls of the containment vessel. The magnetic field is generated by passing a current through the plasma, which creates a strong magnetic field that keeps the plasma away from the walls. This allows the plasma to reach the high temperatures and pressures required for fusion to occur without coming into contact with the containment vessel. The walls of the tokamak must be able to withstand the high temperatures generated by the fusion reaction, which is one of the technical challenges of fusion. In summary, a combination of a physical containment vessel and a magnetic field are used to contain the plasma in a fusion reaction. The magnetic field helps to keep the plasma away from the walls, while the containment vessel must be able to withstand the high temperatures generated by the fusion reaction. Regarding the fuel required for fusion, the isotopes of deuterium and tritium, are there other potential ways of creating that type of intensity used for fusion? The isotopes deuterium and tritium are currently the most widely researched fuels for nuclear fusion, as they can be easily obtained and have a relatively low energy requirement for fusion to occur. However, there are several other fuels that have been proposed for fusion, including 1. Helium-3 Helium-3 is an isotope of helium that is rare on Earth but abundant on the Moon. 1. It has been proposed as a potential fuel for fusion, as it has a lower energy requirement for fusion to occur compared to deuterium and tritium. 2. Proton-boron Proton-boron fusion is a type of fusion that involves the fusion of a proton and a boron-11 nucleus. 2. This reaction has a much lower energy requirement compared to deuterium-tritium fusion, but it is much more difficult to initiate. 3. Mon catalyzed fusion Mon catalyzed fusion is a type of fusion that involves the use of muons, which are subatomic particles similar to electrons. 3. Muons can be used to trigger fusion reactions between light elements, such as hydrogen, without the need for high temperatures and pressures. 4. Antiproton catalyzed fusion Antiproton catalyzed fusion is a type of fusion that involves the use of antiprotons, which are the antiparticles of protons. 4. Antiprotons can be used to trigger fusion reactions between light elements, such as hydrogen, without the need for high temperatures and pressures. Each of these fuels has its own unique challenges and benefits, and further research is needed to determine their feasibility as fuels for nuclear fusion. Currently, deuterium-tritium fusion is the most promising option, but research into other fuels is ongoing. Okay. So fuel source is depending on many circumstances from energy output, to frequency of output, the ability to mine that resource in abundance. As you stated that the two main isotopes tritium and deuterium are the best choices now. Yes, that's correct. 
The choice of fuel for nuclear fusion is based on a number of factors, including the energy output, the frequency of the reaction, and the availability of the fuel. Currently, deuterium and tritium are considered to be the best fuels for fusion because they can be easily obtained, have a relatively low energy requirement for fusion to occur, and have a high energy output. However, it's important to note that the availability of fuel is a significant factor in the feasibility of fusion as a source of energy. Deuterium is abundant in seawater and can be easily extracted, but tritium is much rarer and must be produced through a complex and expensive process. This makes the production and supply of tritium a significant challenge for the development of fusion as a source of energy. In addition to these factors, the development of fusion as a source of energy also requires significant scientific and engineering advancements, such as the development of advanced containment systems and efficient heat management systems. These challenges must be overcome in order for fusion to be a practical and sustainable source of energy. What is containing the energy of the stars and the core of the Earth? The energy of stars and the Earth's core are contained by a combination of physical processes and laws of physics. In stars, the energy is generated by nuclear fusion reactions taking place in the core. The energy produced by these reactions is contained by the pressure and temperature gradients within the star. The intense heat and pressure at the core of the star generates an outward pressure that balances the inward gravitational force, preventing the star from collapsing in on itself. This balance between pressure and gravity is what maintains the stability of a star and allows the fusion reactions to continue. In the Earth's core, the energy is generated by the decay of radioactive isotopes, such as uranium, thorium, and potassium. The heat produced by these reactions is contained by the pressure and temperature gradients within the Earth's interior. The Earth's outer layer, the mantle, acts as a barrier that contains the heat and prevents it from escaping into the atmosphere. The pressure and temperature within the Earth's interior are so great that the solid inner core is actually maintained at a temperature of over 5,000 degrees Celsius, despite being over 1,000 kilometers from the surface. In both cases, the energy generated by these processes is contained by the physical conditions within the system, and the laws of physics that govern the behavior of matter and energy under high temperatures and pressures. The precise nature of the containment varies depending on the specific system and the physical conditions within it, but the overall effect is to maintain the stability and integrity of the system, while allowing the energy to be generated and contained over long periods of time. Pressure and gravity are two things that can harness a fusion reaction. I wonder if because scientists are only thinking within the laws of contemporary physics is what is keeping us from going further. I mean all throughout history was the fight for dominance and the use of technology through scientific methods, but even the church at that time considered science an evil that must not be allowed to spread. The funny thing is that today's modern physics has sort of taken on that role that religion once had on humanity. I am just stating an opinion and speculation at the same time. As an AI language model, I don't have opinions or beliefs. However, I can tell you that scientific knowledge and understanding is always evolving and advancing, and scientists are constantly exploring new ideas and theories. While contemporary physics provides a framework for understanding the natural world, it is not considered an absolute or final truth, but rather a constantly developing body of knowledge. Science and technology have indeed played a significant role in human history, and have greatly impacted our understanding of the world and our ability to control and harness natural processes. However, the pursuit of scientific knowledge and technological advancement is not limited by contemporary physics or any other single set of ideas or beliefs. Scientists are free to explore new theories and ideas, and to challenge existing knowledge and understanding. It is important to remember that science is not a static field, but is constantly evolving and advancing as new discoveries and insights are made. Scientists are constantly exploring new ideas and theories, and are always working to expand our understanding of the natural world and our place within it. So, while contemporary physics provides a framework for understanding the world, it is always open to revision and improvement as new knowledge is gained and new ideas are explored. 
You could say that physics is like an open source language? You could make that analogy, in the sense that both physics and open source software are constantly evolving and being improved upon by a community of contributors. In both cases, there is a shared understanding of the current state of knowledge, but also a recognition that there is always room for improvement and advancement. In physics, scientists and researchers build upon existing theories and models, testing and refining them through experimentation and observation. When new discoveries are made, they are incorporated into the existing body of knowledge, and the understanding of the natural world is expanded. In this way, the field of physics is constantly advancing, with new theories and models being developed and refined over time. Similarly, in open source software, developers build upon existing code and technologies, incorporating new features and fixing bugs as they are discovered. The software is constantly evolving, with contributions from a community of developers who are working together to make it better and more functional. So in both cases, there is a shared understanding of the current state of knowledge, but also a recognition that there is always room for improvement and advancement. This spirit of collaboration and improvement is what drives both physics and open source software forward and allows them to continuously evolve and improve over time. Thank you for watching our video and if you truly enjoyed it, please hit the like, share, and subscribe button and don't forget to hit the bell for notifications of our latest content.